Hello everyone. Welcome to Techies on Wheel. Today we will discuss in detail about the RPA UAT, which is user acceptance testing, how actually it should be performed and what the test document seems like, what are the columns, fields or criteria so one should always take in consideration while doing the UAT. So let's get started. First of all, let's understand what exactly UAT means. In layman terms, if, you, if I have to explain UAT, like in any other field, whatever bot you have developed, specifically I'm talking about RP, in this scenario, whatever bot you have developed as per the PDD, which was requested and signed off by client, it's the mechanism where, or the process where that end user, be it be client uh, or the SMEs who, for whom you are developing the bot, they verify the bot in the lower environment, a test environment to verify whether the bot is performing as expected or not. Um, it's kind of a technical plus the functional validation where the positive and negative scenarios both are tested. Now talking about it, uh, now reading the uh, uh, statement here, U8 is the process for end user or client to ensure that bot execution is performed as expected, which I mentioned compared to the PDD, process design document, which was uh, documented at time of uh, discovery. And all corner cases are covered, which means all the business exceptions. That's the angle from where the user looks like. And the other exceptions are the technical exceptions uh, or the negative scenarios, which are taken in consideration in the UAT uh, document, which we'll, we'll discuss later by the BA alongside if anyone feels like and uh, for the scenarios which can be ideally put over the UAT document, all those test scenarios are collated to be drafted in UAT test document. So it's again the mechanism where end-to-end -end bot is run, validated that it's performing as expected without any exceptions. So your UAT test document compromises of all the workflows, all your business exceptions, um, and if other technical functional exceptions, if uh, if taken in account, for example, the login part, which were discussed in the unit uh, testing as well. So, if twice your bot fails logging into the application, third time it should not go for the login. Otherwise, it will lock your bot account. So that those kind of scenarios are also a pa part of the UAT test document, and. Uh, the bot is validated alongside the, this particular UAT test document. So let's have a look further what exactly this unit test document com compromises of. So initially, if we have to categorize the unit test document, there are two parts to it. Like I mentioned earlier, the very first part where the business analyst document each and every process, what he or she feels like should be part of the test scenarios. Um, so those are the kind of test scenarios onto which the bot would be evaluated and is captured in the test document. That's part one. And the columns specific, uh, again, I'm referring to the automation and anyway test document here. The bot name, the test area, which means your module, which module you are uh, testing, the test description, what exactly you are testing for, what's the test data being used, and who has tested it, and what is the expect expected result. Uh, so these are the columns which are drafted before the UAT test is done. Once your bot is complete and you are ready for a UAT run and you run the bot or execute the bot in front of line, there comes the other section where your the bot observations or run report is drafted, which has columns like test date, onto which date it has been tested, what's the actual result of the bot, whether the scenario has passed or failed, and what's the remark by the tester. So um, we'll discuss in detail why it it comes up, remarks by solution architect and modification required. So let's quickly have a detail onto the uh, test document and then I'll explain you with a scenario, all these columns and how exactly this looks like and should be formulated. So let's have a look onto the test document now. So this is the test document, UAD test document to be specific. And like I mentioned, there are two parts to it. First part of it is which has to be completed before UAT. And then the second part to it, which is in green, is the are the one which are uh, generically uh, generally drafted post um, or by your bot is being executed. So 
the columns here are the project number and title. Each of your project board, each of your board being developed will have your different project number or the board name. So that comes here. And who's approved, um, if your board test scenarios are approved, then who is the uh, approver? The process owner name actually comes up here. Then we have the columns. Let's have a look first on the first part. Serial number, board test area. Which board you are running? Like uh, in one of the scenarios, say there are two boards where uh, extractor board and run board. Extractor board, what is it? would do is say it would extract the input which will be used or it will formulate the input which will be used by the another bot as a in, uh, for processing. So that's the run bot. So in this scenario, say if whatever bot you're running, you have to mention that bot name. Let me take a scenario of a, a bot lo login. Okay, that's a very generic one. And for any application it happens. So, um, I'll just write the name here. For example, I've named my bot as test bot. The area which I'm going to test here for this particular bot is say example, uh, uh, report download, okay? So in this scenario, whatever description, whatever steps I need to, uh, the board needs to perform will come here. So for example, very first one, say, uh, what needs to log into XYZ application. Then the other scenario here is, uh, what navigates to a report page. And then the third is what clicks on the download report. And fourth is what log out of the XYZ application. And close or window, okay? Now, I'll merge it because these are all steps. These are all part of uh, the same uh, test area. Now, what kind of test data I have used? See, um, I have, this does not require in my R's and this does not require any test data. So I'll mention any. But say if in case it was a case processing, so you can mention the test case ID that will come here. I'll just mention not applicable for these. And then uh, tested by, so who's Wavo will be the testers. Now here, tested or uh, test by can be uh, your BA, your SME, or even uh, say, if you are performing it in combination, whatever the person name is, you'll have to mention that person name. So in this scenario, let me write my name. And I'm assuming that I am the uh, BA here. And what are the expected results for each of these actions, which I've mentioned here? It, there will be go expected result. So expected result will be that bought successfully logs in to XYZ application. And then the other is against this bot navigates to report page, bot successfully navigates. So these would be the kind of uh, expected results where you will write the positives and negative scenarios. What clicks on download? and bot log out of the application. Now, once I have crafted whatever be the scenario B, or all the test area and test description related to my bot, all those steps and action needs to be drafted at the early stage before the bot the UAT is performed. This document, like I mentioned, it has to be used while UAT. So the BA can utilize the time while the developer is doing the development, um, BA can make this document and get validated by the client to ensure that none of the steps are being missed here. 
So once we have the CVT test document ready and you execute or run the bot in front of client, there comes this again section of it where which has to be filled during or after UET. Now, when I say during or after UET, which means that if the client wants to or the BA wants to fill up these details while the bot is being executed, he or she can do it. Otherwise, what can happen is that that recording of the bot run can be recorded. And once the SME has time or the BA has time, they go ahead and then they fill up these columns or details around it. So uh, there can be also scenarios where more detailed uh, uh, um, things needs to be validated or uh, due to time crunch or due to bot being um, quite uh, fast, uh, executing in quite speed, these uh, can be uh, not being drafted at the same time. So again, it, it depends uh, scenario to scenario. The other one is executed by which means that who has run the bot and who has done this testing or has written the comments and the approver's name. The, now here again, the process owner would be the approver, ideally your client, but uh, again, it depends. The test date would come here. Say today is 12th of December. So I'll write 12th December 2022. Then we have actual result. So see if bot, what if, which if the bot which I ran, um, bot successfully logged in. Okay, so my comment here would be that bot successfully logged into XYZ application. And this is a scenario of pass or remark by tester. I will write no observation. Then remarks by solution architect. If the solution architect has any uh, any suggestion here, say example, while doing the login, uh, there has been a wait command which is used and which is taking longer time. And it's not the wait wait for window or wait for button or wait for uh, the object. Then those kind of uh, uh, reviews can be done by the solution architect. So in this scenario, I'm assuming that code review was already done and uh, developer has already implemented all the suggestions so i'll mention any and modification required if any so in our scenario we are seeing not any so whatever these values are this has to be observed against the test description the test steps which is being drafted and basis this if all your scenarios are passed that is where your uat scenario uat testing is complete and onto this particular document itself comes the uh, your UAT approval. Once you have the UAT approval, that is where your bot will bot is ready to move to next phase, which is production or pre-prod, which is hypercare phase. So um, it depends situation to situation. Again, now here, if you see, you can mention you can or uh, you would have heard that UAT happens for several days as well. It's not only one time process. So there are two scenarios again where where by um how you can use this UAT test document. One is that you can make a different sheet for each date of testing. In this scenario, if it is 12 December, I'll make one, I'll replicate this sheet for 12 December. I'll rename this as 12th December. Okay. Um, and then for the next no, uh, day, next run, I'll make another sheet. I'll replicate the same sheet and I'll make it for another date. Other option is that you can copy this these columns and you can replicate here date-wise and you can make another row here. You can add another row where you mention the date as well. Or you can make it row-wise. So if I have to filter here, say 12 December, I have run this on 12 December, I'll replicate these all values. I'll make it here. And then I'll um, say day two. And then I'll make the, I'll write a date of say 13th December. So there can uh, it can be permutation and combination, whatever seems visible to you. Uh, you can do the testing uh, or you can modify the test document accordingly. But these are the basic columns where uh, uh, which is being used by UAD to well validate and confirm that bot is performing as expected end to end and is covering all these process scenarios or exceptions, business exceptions. So
So I hope it would have covered all your doubts and you now you would have some what clear idea on to what UAT is and how to do it. So what next? In the next video, we'll discuss in detail about the bot user guide alongside understanding the document and the fields around it. Till then, take care, keep learning, keep growing, stay happy and stay healthy. Thank you, everyone.